Hi, my name is Chaitanya Leela and welcome to Tree Kaya Psychology. I'm going to be reacting to this issue that has been on the internet recently with this movie. It ends with us based on Colleen Hoover's book. Um, it is a story about domestic violence. However, the press release around this uh, subject, this movie, has been really controversial. We have Justin Baldoni, who's the lead male character, um, talking about the importance and the gravity of domestic violence, where we've got, whereas we have Blake Lively, who has been making quite light of the that theme of the movie. And there's she's been under a bit of a grilling from public opinion regarding how she has been using this movie as an opportunity to promote her hair care line, being very, very um, tone deaf in her response to the issues around domestic violence. So I'm going to play some clips here and I will uh, just say my thoughts. And who may watch it? As a man, I'm always going to come with my own biases. And it's one of the reasons I was afraid to direct this movie, let alone act in it. Um, and I wanted to make sure this film always had a, a female gaze and I was never putting myself into it. But one of the things that I think is very easy to say, especially for us men, is when we maybe talk to somebody who's in this situation or we read a book or we, or we hear a news story, the question that's always asked is why did she stay? Mm. And that's the wrong question. Yeah. What we need to be asking ourselves is why do men harm? Yes. And that was the big thing for me. And what I've learned more and more and more of is like, you know, these women who experience this every single day, there's real love there. You know, there's charm, there's charisma, there's passion, there's this belief that they can be better. And it's not so simple. So our friends at No More, um, I'm wearing their pen right now, they were the ones who really worked with me to help me make this film as truthful as possible. And people in the comments... I think that that was such a wonderful way of bringing alight this very, very serious topic of domestic violence. It is such a key question. Many women, especially even when they go, uh, you know, when their case will go to the court, and there's always this question, why did you stay? Why did you stay when you know that he was hitting you, when you know that, you know, uh, this has happened time and time again? And Justin Baldoni is really highlighting um, the complexity of domestic violence and how that is just not an appropriate question when you understand abuse. And the real question is, why do men abuse? And it's not just men that abuse, of course, but this is what the question is being presented here. And it's true, you know, that is something to, to really question. Why do men abuse? Why do men think that they can treat women in that way? What is it about society's vision or perception of women that allow for men to abuse? What is it about men's perception of women that think that allow them to think that this is an object that I can use and discard whichever way I like. Um, it is that very principle and perception of men towards women that is the problem. You know, something that I find really amazing in the Vedas, the Eastern philosophy is that, uh, you know, it says that men should view all women who, who aren't their wives like mother, mothers. And I think that's really beautiful because if you were to view women uh, who you don't have that romantic connection with as mothers, then just think how much respect you would have because it, there is that presupposition that you're meant to have respect for your mother because she birthed you and she's you know, raised you up into be the human being that you are. Um, some people don't have respect for their mothers and some mothers aren't uh, good, good mothers. But as a theory, as a principle that, you know, the Eastern philosophy tries to help men to view women with the eyes of respect. And this is such a key question. Why is it that men abuse women? Um, really great i wanted to highlight this because i think with all of the noise criticizing blake i think this message has just been cast over a little bit 
But then we will talk about Blake Lively and how she is being critiqued. Um, so we'll watch on. Comments of this video were actually shocked to hear someone finally bring up the DV portrayed in this movie. One person said, this is the first time I've heard anyone on the cast talk about the DV in this movie. With another person writing, he is the only person bringing awareness to the actual topic and issue. Blake Lively has also been doing press all week long, and she's definitely taken a different approach when asked very similar questions. Most of us, if we're lucky enough to run into a celebrity in public, we only have a few moments to maybe speak with you guys. But for people who see this movie, who relate to the topics of this movie, on a deeply personal level, they're really going to want to talk to you. This movie is going to affect people and they're going to want to tell you about their lives. So if someone understands the themes of this movie, comes across you in public uh, and, and they want to really talk to you, what's the best way for them to be able to talk to you about this? How would you recommend they go about like it? Like asking for like my address or my phone number or like my location share. Or I could just location share you and then we could, uh, <laughs> I'm just curious. Just about, social like, security like, number. I'm a Virgo, yeah. so I'm like, are we talking logistics? Are we talking emotionally? And even when... Yeah, I, this was one of the clips that has really got her under fire because her tone deaf, completely insensitive, inappropriate response to this question of... I do also think that the question was a little bit intrusive because he's saying, how are people going to contact you to talk about domestic violence, in, in essence, is the question. And it's not really an appropriate question because, um, you know, how, how can she possibly talk to uh, strangers about their very deep personal lives? However, she didn't handle the question very well. And I've seen other interviews with her where, where she takes quite a defensive approach to interviewers. And, and this is an example of it. You know, she could have just said, well, I'm not a professional in this area, so I would probably refer individuals that have related to the themes of abuse to professionals to helplines uh that would have been an appropriate response um she could have said you know i i would empathize with victims of abuse because when i had to play the character uh, of this of lily who was being abused it evoked so many different deep emotions in me um and and you know i had to research right the state of mind of a victim in order to get into character. And, you know, I can never fully relate. However, uh, I, I I could get a semblance of, of those emotions. And so, you know, anything than what she did say, which was a sarcastic response. Um, yeah. So uh, I definitely think that she's being criticized for good reason. Um, so let's just watch on and then I'll probably have more to say. She's asked directly to comment on the DV in the film. She still somehow manages to talk her way out of giving any kind of answer with actual substance. So a lot of survivors of generational and domestic are going to see this film. I'm curious, what is the message that you hope that they take away from it? I think that you are so uh, much, and not to minimize it anyway, but you are so much more than just a survivor or just a victim. Well, that is a huge thing. You are a person of multitudes, and what someone has done to you doesn't define you. You define you, and what you have in you and what you're capable of and what you have done and are doing and will do is so much bigger than anything anyone else can do to you. And I think that that is... Um, that feels like it like is so empowering and rooting and grounding and i hope that people see that because this is this is a story that covers domestic violence, but it's not about domestic violence, it's about this one now something else you may have noticed from these clips is the lack of press interviews containing all the main so yeah uh you know that that response she acknowledges the element of domestic violence but she says that it's not about domestic violence it's about this particular character the response that she she gives is a very kind of pop psychology, you know, life coach, sorry to say, <laughs> you know, response to, well, it doesn't define you. It's positive psychology, isn't it? You can overcome it. Um, it I mean, you know, should she know the, the depths and the levels of domestic violence and the impact of it if she hasn't experienced it or it's not close to home? No, not necessarily. However, I do think that she has a responsibility having played a character, a lead character who, 
you know, is experiencing domestic violence? Does she have a responsibility to highlight the gravity of of that message to viewers, to society? Yes, I, I do think I do think she does. I think she could have done more research. I think she she could have, hey, you know, they could have had professionals, you know, going on a press tour with them. What you know, why not? Um, you know, so so many different ways she could have responded to this, but it just it does show the disconnect between uh, her thinking process around this movie and you know the gravity and on the ground level the reality that people do experience, um, because although yes, you know the no ex no experience on or no experience with a man can define you. And that does sound good and it is positive and it is empowering. However, it is very surface level. It's very superficial. It's very, the, the brain is di disconnected from the body type of response because when you experience trauma, when you have been abused, it's such a visceral experience. You know, some victims, many victims, um, you know, are, are at the brink of sort of survival, it's sort of life or death, at least psychologically. Um, and that is a lot more uh, in depth and challenging and, and so deeply complex than just, it doesn't define me, I've got other facets of me. You know, the type of response that she gives to that is, is as if somebody failed an interview and they're not going to let let it define them and they're they're going to understand that they've got they've got other aspects to them uh you know victims of of domestic violence or interpart uh, interpersonal partner violence is i mean this is about life or death sometimes for some people you know some victims don't even have a semblance of their 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 own being that that they question whether they should even exist. They don't even sometimes are able, they're, they're not able to function in the sense of just eating, sleeping and showering, um, let alone what other facets of me, you know, are, am I able to, you know, express? So there's definitely a lack of understanding, which is surprising when actors are meant to really get into character and research their character, and um, this shows such a such, such a disconnect of that. Um, you know, another thing that I I wanted to talk about with this is how society at large are putting celebrities on a pedestal. That these celebrities become not the artist that is a conduit of a message but that these celebrities become idols they become godlike they become worshipable in one sense um and really they are just a conduit of a message you know actors artists have the privileged position a unique skill in being able to relay an emotion a story in order for the viewer to be transformed, to experience something, to relish the emotion. And that is what art is. That is what actors are meant to do. And it's become less about that with the celebrity culture and more about look at me and now I'm going to show you and sell you all of these products so I can make money because I'm the star. And it, it's not about the message or the emotion. And that does have a valued position in society, like art, artistry, dance, and music has a position in society. But what's its value? The value is when it can move the emotion and transform somebody through that. Like I do therapy and I work in a very private confidential way and I work with transformation, but I, it's so different to an, an actor 
But if I were to begin to claim that I am the best, I am, I am the reason or I am the one <laughs> that, you know, deserves all the limelight or, or the pedestal position, I'm abusing my power. I'm abusing my position. And I think that actors also need to be mindful that they don't abuse their skill, that this doesn't become an opportunity to market themselves, their clothes, their rings, their hair care lines, and all of that, but that they remain grounded and humble and, you know, let something divine possibly <laughs> move through them so that it can uplift society. And I think, you know, this is such a key point within all of this controversy that this could have been used to uplift society. And it's an example of where it hasn't. And, you know, unfortunately, she's the fall guy here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's celebrity culture, you know, may, maybe she is a victim of celebrity fame culture that has, that is just an illusion. She has fallen a victim to an illusion that this culture that I need to now promote myself and my businesses instead of uplifting society through my artistic skill. So that was my take on, on this. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll be back with another video. Um, hopefully this method of me recording has been okay. I have a full-time job and I do doing a PhD and I, I'm a therapist and so I'm very busy. And so I'm hoping that this platform or platforms like this StreamYard can help assist me and make life easier in my editing and re recording because I do enjoy making these videos. I just have very little time. Thank you. And I'll see you in another video. Do subscribe uh, for more. It definitely encourages me. I know I have a very small and slow pace moving channel, <laughs> but hopefully I will be making more um, and I'll see you in another video.